really want to talk to Shane and Dana from RE Colorado and Stellar MLS about a slightly controversial topic, maybe for some of you, but some of the interesting findings they've found in their MLS organizations as they've gone to what some call native data dictionary, which is a good topic for the industry. So come on up. Thank you. Boy, the lights are bright up here. Um, good morning, I'm Dana Bennett, VP of Industry Engagement at RE Colorado. And good morning, I'm Shane Fairley, and I'm from Stellar MLS. And so we're gonna talk to you a little bit this morning about our experiences with changing over to Native Data Dictionary. And we don't have too much time, so let's jump right in. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and go for it. So other than the obvious that we have to get this done, um, why did you guys decide to go Native Data Dictionary? Yeah, so uh, for us, we, we really did want to be one of the first uh, large MLSs in order to go Native Data Dictionary. Uh, we felt like, number one, it would make us attracted to innovators. But then we also, we've been on a growth path for years. And so the thought process behind it was that if we were to go Native Data Dictionary, then hopefully it would encourage others to go Native Data Dictionary. And then, it, you know, like I said, we've been on a growth path. And so to be able to bring in new shareholders, quicker, we felt like was going to be a win-win for, for both sides. And so um, that did not actually happen, by the way. Uh, and so that was one of the things that, that we learned was that even though we decided to, uh, others did not want to go through uh, some of the pain uh, that, that we experienced. So, but we also just wanted to answer the calling, you know, for the industry overall and just make sure that, hey, if others saw that a large MLS was able to do this successfully, that hopefully it would you know, help move the needle a little bit quicker and encourage others to do that too. So how about you? Okay, well, our why um, was somewhat aspirational because we are a charter member. I don't even know if we use that term anymore, but we were an early member. Um, Pat Bybee's name was up on the screen yesterday. So we've been involved in RESO from the very beginning. So we've watched the data dictionary. We've paid attention to the fields. And I would say it was aspirational to us to some degree to want to move into that data standard because we felt like it was important. And very much like Stellar, we wanted to be an attractive marketplace for innovators. We wanted our data to be clean. And uh, we just decided to uh, go ahead and be one of the more forward thinking MLSs and just get it done. Take the leap. Exactly. Okay, so uh, tell us a little bit about your, your process. Well, our, you go about things? <laughs> um, our process um, was run by our IT department. Um, we had a project manager help us with this all the way through. This touched every department in the entire company. Um, there was no stone unturned, no system not touched. And we... Um, had a great opportunity to marry this data dictionary transition with a move to our vendor's newest platform. So we used this as an opportunity to, to make that happen. We did the data dictionary change along with rolling out of the new platform. That's how we decided to move forward with timing. What was your process like? Yeah, so uh, for us, it was a very, very long uh, mapping process. And so uh, the person that was responsible for that, her name was Melissa. Uh, she no longer, uh, she actually works for Bright now. Uh, but she, I don't think that I saw her for like a month. Um, she went into a dark room and she would come out <laughs> occasionally. Um, and she was uh, not very happy when she came out because what she discovered was that our database was, was very, very bloated. Uh, and what I mean by that is that we had years of you know, mergers, merging with other organizations, and so bringing in their data, uh, not doing it in an appropriate way. Uh, we also uh, had a structured database at one time and it got flattened. Um, and so what we found was is that we had duplicate values that were everywhere. Uh, and what I mean by that is maybe we had, you know, one field in residential, but then we had the same exact field that was called something very slightly different uh, in, I don't know, land or rental or something like that. And so uh, one was maybe a you know a character field, and the other one a, a numeric field. So we we had uh, multiple fields that we had to map, and that was one of the actual benefits that we got on the outs on the outset was that you know we were really able to take our bloated database and and stream that down. Uh, and so I talked about a very very long mapping process, also a very very uh, long and, and kind of painful testing process. 
And so uh, really felt like a lot of the testing fell on our staff. And so we had to go back and, and just retest a lot. Um, we had to make changes, re-upload re the data, retest everything. And so uh, that was another thing, Dana, Dana that we also uh, improved upon was our processes overall as far as testing and things of that nature. Um, when we rolled everything out, uh, we had what I refer to as a war room set up. So we had a central location uh, where in the building where anybody could come and, and give us any kind of feedback that, that they were hearing on the phones. Uh, we also had a representative from our vendor who was on site. And I really feel like that uh, was, a, was a, bi a big benefit because we were able to turn uh, things around quickly and kind of help stop the bleeding before it, it became a major issue. So, uh, so very long process. Uh, how long was yours? Ours was nine months. So we started in April and finished in December. Okay. And, and ours was about 11 months. So again, long process, long project. Uh, but so uh, how did you uh, go about communicating? Well, um, part of our process for communicating, and actually I just want to jump back on the process because sure. it, what um, Shane described was almost identical to what we uh, experienced as well. We did have our vendor on site for the process, which was, or, or the, the kind of the war room setup, as you mentioned it, so very, very parallel to what your experience was. And, and I failed to mention, um, yes, our uh, business analysts, they definitely were, you know, tucked away in a room while they were doing all that data mapping through all of our various property types. So very, very similar situation. But um, what Shane and I learned on our prep call is that communications, we decided to approach it a little bit differently than one another. So at RE Colorado, we heavily involved our subscribers. We set up teams to take a look at printouts. We looked we had teams that looked at um, the various property types, uh, the listing input, the stats, the reports, all of those different things. We involved our customers early, early, early on in the process. So they effectively became some key influencers for us. They were out in the field and they felt ownership into the process. And as we described the communication of the why for the subscribers, we talked about how we would be able to bring um, technology in quicker. Anything that was a data-driven product um, could come to market quicker in our marketplace. They bought into that a lot. They liked the idea of having our market, the, their market, um, more involved in innovation and products that they'd maybe learned about in another market where they work, that, that it could come into the market very quickly. Um, so the communication started, I, I said our process started in April and, and finished up in December. Our communication process actually started in March. So maybe we're more like uh, 10 months. So maybe I'll split the difference with you. Um, we started talking RESO. So I'm, I'm hoping that if you came to the Denver area and talked to a broker that they might even know what that acronym means because we talked heavily to our subscribers about national standards. That was very, very important to us. So along with the transition to the new platform, we want them all talking the same language. And when we brought this initiative to our board of directors to say, hey, this is what the organization's going to do for the next nine months or so, um, we talked about translation, that we wanted everybody speaking the same language. We want any place from uh, a call coming into customer care or a data consumer who uses any of our data to be able to have that phone call, that communication, that trouble ticket go entirely through our organization and everybody knows exactly what they're talking about. It's not, oh, that's the field that we used to use for what, or uh, just none of that confusion. Everybody's speaking the same language from beginning to end. And so that communication process, um, as we got closer and closer to launch, we went so we started a communication in March. Um, keep in mind this, of course, some of you in this room went through this with us from being data consumers that you knew that we were changing all of this. So you've experienced this, uh, our communication out to you as well firsthand. So we started in March. We did monthly communications while we were doing all the back end work. And then from there, the closer we got, the more we communicated to the point where the last couple of months of the process, 
we were communicating on a weekly basis and then it became a daily basis and then we launched. So how did you guys go about yeah, it? Yeah, we, we, uh, we took a, a polar opposite approach uh, because we tried to downplay all of the communications as much as we possibly could. Uh, the, the person that was running the project at the time, I can still hear them saying, I want this to be like a duck on water. Um, so they, you know, duck on water. We wanted the, uh, the, the message to our, our customers to be like, hey, this is not very impactful to you, uh, that there are going to be some changes, but they're going to be, you know, intuitive changes and they're just going to kind of make sense. Uh, so we, we knew that it was a very, very large project uh, overall, but we really didn't want our customers to think that it was. So we did not take the opportunity to go and educate them, uh, you know, like you did. Uh, but so what we did is, is our approach was we tried to keep the display names, as many of them as we could, the same uh, so that it, there, it didn't show as a change. And then any kind of new field, again, we were just kind of saying, hey, this is an intuitive change. It just makes sense. Uh, we, one of the things that we did was we took an opportunity to regroup a lot of our fields. Some of our fields were kind of scattered about, not only on our reports, but also on listing input. So uh, we, we brought in a couple of beta groups, just like you did, and said, you know, hey, how can we better group these things? Uh, just, again, to ha try to hammer home the message of these are intuitive changes that you would, you know, be able to pick up easily. Um, we also... Uh, I talked about the, some of the changes on th the reports. Um, we also brought in some beta groups just to make sure that, hey, do we need to move this one around uh, you know, on, the, on the display just to make it a little bit more uh, effective? But then we also were able to cut down on some of our reports. We, you know, the, the brokers, they loved the one-page report, and we had a lot of them that would run onto two pages just because we had a lot of different fields. I talked about the bloated database. So we were also able to kind of streamline things in that manner too. And I feel like that was one of the benefits uh, that came out of it too. So again, polar opposite uh, approach to the communication. So, but I do feel like uh, that ours was effective. So uh, we didn't end up getting, uh, we did get a lot of calls. I, I don't want to say that we didn't, but I, I, I feel like our messaging as far as, hey, these are intuitive, uh, was, was really effective with our customers. So. All right. Love it. Um, so outcomes and benefits. Yeah, so the outcomes and the benefits. Okay, I, I've, I've talked about uh, being able to streamline our database a, a couple of times. So another thing that we were also able to streamline was our contacts. Uh, we were able to kind of clear out all of those old contacts the, the, for data licensing that nobody ever would re reply to. So I think that that was one of the benefits that came out of it. Uh, because we were also able to rearrange things in the system, our trainers said that, hey, these are, it's actually easier to train some of our newer customers uh, on, on this overall because they are uh, more intuitive uh, system design. Uh, and another benefit that I felt was, was just, uh, we didn't know what we were getting into was the experience of the team going through some of these things. So I talked about that we improved some of our processes, uh, but just the experience of having to go through all of this, uh, such a large project overall, I really feel like our, our team came out uh, better overall, just having that experience. Uh, I, I feel like our, our management team, especially, a lot of the managers are still there today. And so they carry all that experience forward with them. Uh, so I feel like this has helped us just grow as an organization overall. And that was one of the benefits that I didn't see coming. Uh, but that's definitely one that, that we have been able to carry forward and has been very helpful for us. So how yeah, about you? Yeah, and I would say that our experience was very similar. Um, Shane talked about the bloated database. This gave us a real opportunity to you know, kind of stop and say, what's the quality of our data? Do we have the fields that we want to have? Or do we have duplicates? Are we consistent across property types? So it was the benefit to just take on this project, stop at this one point in time, and really just clean up all of that data. So we feel very good about that. Um, again, the efficiency of everybody speaking the same language about the data dictionary, the labels. Um, 
also cleaning up vendor lists, uh, vendors that we'd had a relationship with that were um, kind enough to still pay us for data, found out that they had either moved or uh, we didn't have current contact information or that they really were no longer providing any sort of data-driven product. There weren't very many of those, but it was still nice to know that we had that all back in sync. And then from um, an organizational perspective as well, this gave us a chance to really live our core values of, of trust and innovation and um, some, some of the other things that we live by on a day-to-day -day basis. Because, you know, folks go to work, your customer care, you're answering those phone calls, you're in IT and you're working on a project or your Q&A or you're accounting, you're taking care of the receivables and the payables. Um, so of course, everybody was doing their core job, but because this was an all hands, it affected every single system within the organization. It gave us a chance to almost kind of be galvanized to work together on something of a, the magnitude right. that was really nothing short of um, putting in a full new MLS platform or conversion, I guess, is what we call it a lot in this industry. So the ability to come together as a company um, on a project of this magnitude, um, and it does carry forward as well. Um, I, I think it just, it, it was just a great opportunity for us. Um, and I feel like it was a success. So so although it was bumpy, these things are never perfect. There is always going to be something that, you know, um, gets exposed and you've got to correct and go back and retest or what have you. Um, we were able to uh, take the successes and the bumps as, as a team for the whole company. And that felt pretty good. I mean, I, I don't think that's the driving force between behind uh, changing your database to a native data dictionary, but it was certainly a nice outcome. So um, we're not going to take questions because we're running short on time. We're going to try to get us back on track, but there is... Um, you can find us in the halls, though. I, we can find us in the halls, as well as the fact that we are going to ask the question, would you do it again? Yeah. Yes, we would. We absolutely would. Uh, even, you know, our team loved actually the project, even though it was a, a huge project because it was so large, they really, really dug in. And so they, they loved going in and just the, the learning experience overall. Uh, it, and so, like I said, it was very, very long pro uh, uh, project. But yes, we would absolutely do it again. We feel like it did set us up for success in the future. Uh, we also do want to be one of the, the ones that are carrying the flag forward and setting the good example for others. We also feel like, hey, we've d been here, we've done this, so we can share our experiences with others. So, uh, Dana, Dana, keep on calling you the wrong name. <laughs> so, but hopefully I can get this question. Right. <laughs> that's, that's, so, that's okay. would, would, you, would you do it again? Uh, absolutely, yes, absolutely, hmm. we would. Um, we're on the other side of it now. Um, we feel like we've proven to our board of directors that this was a good decision. Um, we have recently joined MLS Grid and Joseph. Um, I talked to him a little bit ago and he said that our data is very clean. So getting that reinforcement of something that we've spent such an effort on um, and that we've got clean data feels pretty good. Um, and so for the for the brokers or those of you who represent brokers, you know, as you move forward with your data-driven initiatives, um, we like to be your partner in, in having clean data so that things can move more quickly and be more accurate in the industry. Ditto. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you.